In this video, I'm gonna share with you the five most important changes that you need to be aware of that is coming to your Google Ads accounts right now. And all of these changes were announcements that Google made at its recent Google Marketing Live conferences that happened all over the world over the past four to six weeks. Now, if you're not aware, Google Marketing Live is basically its hype up session where it rolls out all of its new changes and everything goes unchecked. And what I mean by that is that it's very much a one-way communication of Google sharing what it wants you to know about Google Ads. So consider it very much as a sales launch. So the one thing that I would say with that is that with any of the major announcements that Google makes at Google Marketing Live, just be really, really aware that this is a sales launch for them. So don't just blindly go through and make all the changes. What you wanna be doing is you wanna really consider the different announcements that Google is making and really think about it and look at some data changes in your own accounts and don't just make massive wholesale changes because Google made an announcement at Google Marketing Live. Now, I personally went to the Google Marketing live in Sydney, which was last week at the time of recording this. And what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to break down the five most important changes which are either in Google Ads right now or are coming to Google Ads and really break down how that affects you, the average marketer or business owner who's trying to get the best results with Google Ads. Now, there were some larger announcements that Google made at Google Marketing Live, especially around cross-channel acquisition management with their re-release of the Meridian project. They've also got some new connections and some new data coming up around Google Ads Data Manager, which will allow you to add in some extra first party data and connect with some external apps like Salesforce and Shopify. And then there's also some new rollouts to Product Studio, which is gonna allow you, especially in your shopping ads, to create videos from images. There's also gonna be universal language dubbing for different ads, so you can have ads in English, which are then translated to other languages, and also some virtual try-on at the moment. And the first step is that there is gonna be some releases where users can actually do a virtual try-on of different T-shirts. Now with those three things, I'm not going to be sharing too much in this video. And the reason for that is that they aren't fully launched yet. So they are all scheduled to be launched later this year, but that rollout can be pushed back. So there's no point me really breaking that down because what I found often with these announcements to what actually happens can sometimes be different. But if you wanna make sure that you never miss any important updates that come up with Google Ads, make sure that you don't only subscribe to this channel, but that you also turn on the notification bell so you know every time I release a new video right here. And my goal here is, as what it always is, is to give you the most straightforward and practical teaching that you can use for your Google Ads campaigns. So right now, let's get into the top five most important announcements that happened at Google Marketing Live. And as I said at the start, I'm really gonna be focusing on those changes which are most relevant for you and your accounts. If you think I've missed anything from Google Marketing Live's product updates, why don't you put a comment down in the comment section so that we can keep the discussion going further. And the first major change, and this actually is nothing new because I've spoken at length about this on this channel, but if it was even possible, broad match keywords are not only here to stay, they're more of a focus than what they were previously. Now, what was interesting to hear here is that at Google Marketing Live, Google made the announcement that their AI models are now 100 times more accurate than what they were 18 months ago. And the example that they gave is that over the last couple of months, and only over the last couple of months, the machine learning within search terms and auctions has only been able to differentiate between search terms like milk chocolate and chocolate milk. With the problem being earlier that if you were to target chocolate milk, it would pull up searches for milk chocolate. And as you may know, chocolate milk and milk chocolate are two different things. Now, Google were really selling this as a positive. Now, yes, that is a positive, but my big issue here is that Google was making it sound like that their AI systems could do this, you know, when they relaunched the changes to broad match keywords 18 months ago. And that's just a really perfect example of where I say that with all of these announcements which Google is giving, you do need to tread slowly and make sure you do some testing in maybe one or two campaigns before you just roll it out across your total account. Because quite often with this, the announcements that Google make are theoretically true. And what I mean by that is that what they're announcing is theoretically true and how it should work, but quite often it works quite differently. But as we're talking about broad match targeting, one thing that I did find very, very interesting and very relevant is that user search queries, so the search terms that users are using that have five words or more 
are now growing one and a half times faster. So what that means is that we're seeing a very, very fast trend towards people doing more detailed searches. So let me give you an example. Rather than someone searching for Nike Air Max shoes, they would actually be putting in men's Nike Air Max shoes, size 10, colors red and blue. So users are getting a lot more detailed in their searches. Now, the reason for why I'm happy with this is because this is something which I've been predicting and teaching about very clearly for the last nine months. The strategy which I'm really recommending, which when I came from Google Marketing Live, it really just reinforced what this strategy is, is that for your keywords and your ad groups, you should be building your ad groups with two or three long tail broad match keywords that have at least three words in them, but ideally you'd be having four, five or six words in them. And then from those broad match keywords, you then build out exact match keyword lists and also negative keyword lists. Now, this is a really, really big subject. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I will show you another video that you can go and watch on YouTube for free access it right here. And that's where I do go into broad match keywords and the structure that you should be using. So like it or not, broad match is here to stay. But as I said, we don't need to be alarmed by it. But as I said, at the end of this video, I will be showing you where you can watch some extra training in order to get your keyword match targeting strategy right in 2024. All right, the second most relevant announcement from Google Marketing Live is all about using Performance Max with Google Search, but I would also extend that to using it with Google Shopping as well. And in the Sydney Google Marketing Live, the presenter there was saying that it was a power pair of Performance Max and Search. I then went and checked and watched the Google Marketing Live, which was based in the US, and they said the same thing of the power pair of Performance Max and Search. So it's obviously an internal term that Google is rolling with. Like everything that Google's doing at the moment with Demand Gen and Performance Max, I do have to say that their marketing team is getting pretty corny with the terminology that they're using and power pair is just another example of that for me it really sounds like the marketing team were just massive fans of the power rangers growing up but anyway that's a whole nother topic so what google was saying is that when people were using performance max and search together that they saw a 27 percent increase in conversions i would not be focusing too much on that 20 percent increase and the reason for that is because they didn't break down where the data was from and they didn't give any idea of the different needs niches that those businesses were in. They also didn't talk about the structure of those campaigns. So I wouldn't read into that at all. But having said that, internally from the start of this year, we've been seeing great success and I have been recommending that people use Performance Max and Search together. But having said that, I do not recommend that you turn on Performance Max and Search right at the start. You need to remember that Performance Max was designed and has always been designed in order to find new conversions. So my recommendation would be that for service-based businesses, online coaches, and also for services or software businesses that you would start with Google search and then you would add in Performance Max. For e-commerce brands, you would start with search and shopping and then add in Performance Max. Now, to answer that big question of when you should start Performance Max, you need to be looking at, you'd be wanting to see 30 conversions over a 30-day period and you'd also want to be confident that you've got a really good idea of the best converting search terms, the best converting audiences, and you've also completed some split tests to find the best converting ad copies and also images that work for your company or your brand. When you've got those things in place, what we've been seeing great success with is by having search and shopping campaigns that are targeting high conversion intent searches. And then we use our Performance Max with the below settings that we're changing it to only bid for new customers and then adding our own brand to the brand exclusion list. So what you're then doing there is that you've effectively got two tiers of campaigns. You've got your high buying intent, so your bottom of your funnel being your search and your shopping campaigns, really targeting those high conversion intent and also those users that are already in your system and they're ready to buy. Whereas you're using Performance Max to go out and target new audiences that are not familiar with your brand or your products yet. And that's the best strategy that I'm seeing. But as I said, don't just go through because Google is saying that the power power of Performance Max and Search works together. To get the full extent out of that, a big part of that is that we do know that if you've got exact match keywords and someone was to search that term, the ad would trigger from the search campaign, not the Performance Max campaign. So that's why you would not start with Performance Max. You would start with that search so you can build out those high converting keywords so that you can then control the spend for those high 
by converting keywords in your search and your shopping campaigns. All right, now numbers three and four. So the next two announcements, I'm actually quite excited to see them. And the reason for that is because they're gonna give us some extra optimization options. And the first one is, so the number three announcement to keep an eye out on is that within Performance Max, in your Google Ads dashboard, at some stage over the coming weeks and months, you'll start to see placement level reporting for the display network and the YouTube network. Now they did say that you'll have options for exclusions at the YouTube level. I don't know whether that's gonna be for all of YouTube or at the channel level. And what we're, what I'm assuming will happen here is similar to what Google rolled out about nine months after launching Performance Max is that it started to give data at the asset group level around clicks, costs, and conversion data. And if we were to get that same level of information like clicks, costs, conversion data at the placement level so that we could see how the display network and the shopping network and the search network were working together, it would give us some different optimization options. So I'm excited about that, but once again, not too excited because I wanna see it rolled out before we make any final calls on it. But like any anything, I like to optimize all of my Google Ads campaigns by data. So anywhere where Google is giving us more data, I'm saying thumbs up. Thank you, Google. Please give us more. Now, number four, the other big announcement was that Google is going to be releasing gross profit bidding. So they're going to be adding in an extra smart bidding option. So not just maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, but also gross profit. Now this obviously works in the e-commerce space. I don't know whether it'll go on shopping or whether it will be stuck to performance max only, but this would be a powerful tool because let's just say, for example, you're an e-commerce brand, you're selling sunglasses, you've got pairs of sunglasses, which target the same user search terms. Both of these products cost hundred dollars, but one set of these sunglasses, have a cost of goods of $50, whereas the other one has a cost of goods of only $20. By using profit-based bidding, Google would then be able to really focus more on the higher profit margins, not just the total conversion value. So if Google rolls that out, I think that is gonna be a major change. I'm really looking for that to becoming active in Google Ads campaigns. Now, with these type of changes, it's highly likely that they'll be released at different speeds. So it usually gets released in different countries, usually America and Europe are first, but it may not go across all accounts. They usually select different types of accounts. So it'd be something just to watch out for when it does become available. And once it does become available and we've got some testing, we will sure to be giving our view on how you can best use this for your Google Ads campaigns. All right, and number five, the last most relevant point for you and your Google Ads campaigns is that Google is pushing really, really hard on demand gen. For me, demand gen has been with us for around about a year now. I know there was some early beta testing, but basically everyone has had access for about a year. And to date, I still haven't really seen a positive use case for this, except if you are a larger brand that is spending over six figures a month in Google Ads, and then you just allocate about five to 10% of your total budget to demand gen. Now, one of the main reasons for that is just because the acquisition windows are too long and you need a significant budget behind it in order for Google to be able to get enough data there. So that's why I just haven't been recommending it for normal business owners because the amount of budget and the time frame required would sink most businesses before they saw a benefit in it. But a big change that they are making for demand gen is one of the features that got everyone interested in demand gen was was that you could create lookalike audiences. And Google made an announcement that the lookalike audience, the customer match list that you need to provide to Google in order to create those lookalike audiences is being reduced from a thousand to a hundred. Now that's potentially a positive. I want you to hear my language, potentially a positive. So I'm definitely not giving it a full green light because it would potentially allow smaller businesses with smaller customer base sizes to maybe use demand gen. But before I gave any sort of recommendation recommendation, I'm going to be doing my own testing. If you've got some spare budget and you do want to test it, I would say don't allocate any more than five to 10% of your total account spend on it. And you would also be needing to give long acquisition windows. So I'd be saying I wouldn't be making a call on that for a good five to six months of data. So that's why I'm not really recommending demand gen yet. But once we see that change from a thousand down to a hundred and I do some further testing, I'll then follow up with another 
different video for the potential use cases for demand gen. All right, so that's my wrap up from Google Marketing Live. But the biggest thing that I would say is that regardless of any announcements that Google makes, for success with Google Ads, regardless of what type of campaign you're running or what business you're marketing, the core to success is having a structured optimization strategy. And to help you with that, I wanna give you access to my Google Ads optimization checklists. And these are checklists which you can use so that you know exactly what to optimize in your Google Ads campaigns. And I've got these checklists for both e-commerce brands and also service-based businesses. And if you wanna access my optimization checklists, just follow that link in the description below. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And as always, it has been my absolute pleasure to have you here. And as promised at the start of the video, if you wanna see this extra training on broad match keywords, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.